In this video, we're gonna talk about what makes good design. And this isn't so subjective like you might say, what is good art? Good design is about intentionality, it's about purpose, and it's about the ability for someone to use that thing, experience that thing. So stick with me for the next couple minutes and we're gonna talk about what makes good design and how you can use that in your life today. This is Michael Cohen, the Tech Rabbi, and welcome to the Educated by Design vlog. Today, I wanted to talk about good design. And the experiences that I have had, the learning that I've done, the research, etc., etc., that has gotten me to really understand good design not from an opinion or feeling, but from history. And I'm going to use Apple as an example in today's video. Not just because I love Apple, but because Apple has an interesting relationship with Dieter Rams and with modern German design, industrial design. And whatever you feel about Apple, everyone's entitled to their opinion. You don't like this, you don't like that, missing this, missing that. But the bottom line is, Apple is good design. And if you feel it's missing certain components or it's too simple, it's childish, you might want to stick around and listen to this video because I'm going to share with you an incredible designer, Dieter Rams, and how inspired and influenced Johnny Ives and the Apple design team was when looking at Dieter Rams and his work with the company Braun. And there is a link in the description below to a Cult of Mac article from 2012, actually, that side by side compares a lot of these Braun and Apple products. But I wanted to share the design principles with you because I feel like these principles are not about products, they're not about things, they're about people. And that's a quote from Dieter Rams that good design is about people, not products. So I'm gonna read the list off, won't claim that I memorized them, so here we go. Number one, good design is innovative. What does innovation mean? It means that it's something that is new and useful and enjoyed by people. It brings significant value to a large audience. So innovation scaled looks a little different in a first grade classroom with a first grader trying to create something great, a high school student, a Thomas Edison, an Albert Einstein, right? So there is scale to innovation, but it's definitely something where your action results in something and other people find it useful. So there are plenty of people that find Apple products useful. Check. Number two, it makes a product useful. That ties into the first one, which is not just value, but it's actually useful for the person. And if you think about maybe 10 years ago, the idea of making a phone call, checking the internet, capturing a photo, capturing a video, these were all multiple objects, multiple products that you needed to be maybe limited by geographical location, like a desktop computer, or getting your video camera out, snapping that photograph on your photo, and then trying to figure out how to get that photo off of the device, whether it's film, whether it was digital. So making it useful is the saying that uh, Steve Jobs didn't invent the iPhone. He actually curated all the technology around him and put it into something that was not just powerful and innovative, but extremely useful. Okay, number three, it's it has aesthetic, okay? Now, this one could be subjective, could be based on your feeling, your style, etc. but the bottom line is, is that Apple products are sleek, they are clean, they are simple in an intentional way. And the proof of that is that if you look at the flagship devices of Samsung, the flagship devices of HP, they are all trying to mirror the Apple design, the Surface Studio, is trying to, awesome product by the way, so don't think I'm an Apple sheep, love the Surface Studio by Microsoft. Incredible, incredible device, incredibly powerful and incredibly expensive, okay? Number four, makes a product understandable. Now, this is the key and this is a for better or for worse in the space of good design and in the space of Apple specifically, which is you wanna have a lifelong customer and that's just good business but it starts with good design that's connected to people so think about it there's been hits and criticisms on final cut pro dumbing itself down going very simple childlike if you will and the reason for that is for better or for worse they lost a huge professional core market to adobe 
because of those decisions. I think personally that it was too simplified. They really should have focused on iMovie that really hasn't had much of a big advancement over the past five or six years. But case, well, you know, we'll table that. The focus though is that, that making a product understandable. If a first grader can use your product and your customer can engage with that, they understand it because it's simple and straightforward in its design. Right? Take a look at the side-by-side -side comparison right now between the iPhone camera and the Samsung Galaxy camera. Right, Samsung Galaxy camera has amazing stock, editable, and functionable features for its camera, getting down to the ISO, to the, to the granular. Right, But if you're just trying to take a picture, so who's taking the picture first and moving on with their life? Who's focusing on experiencing what is worth taking a photo or a video versus someone who's fumbling around trying to get that crazy professional shot. So there are third party apps if you want to get fancy, if you want to take night shots, if you want to get really granular. But Apple is all about simplicity. Right? So now your first grader becomes a second grader, becomes an eighth grader, becomes a high school student, college student, adult. They have children. You just created a generation of loyal customers and fans. Why? Because your designs were understandable for a first grade level. Okay, I've been pretty successful at teaching Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator to middle school students, to upper elementary, fifth grade students. I can't teach Adobe Photoshop to a first grader. Thank God for Adobe Spark, right? So number five, it's unobtrusive. Once again, if I can't take a picture on the fly right away, if I can't in the flick of the, of the power button and just swipe over, take a picture quickly, so it's in the way. The technology is in the way. More features run the risk of you having an unobtrusive or, or an obtrusive and an obstacle to your experience. Once again, I love Adobe Photoshop. I've been using Adobe Photoshop since I was 15 years old. Adobe Photoshop. 5.0, shout out to 5.0, right? But for me, I'm going to Adobe Spark nine times out of 10 because I just love the simplicity. I love that I can just get things done. I love Keynote because I can just get it done. Get it done, okay? Number six, it's honest. And that's kind of weird. What do you mean design could be honest? It means that what you see is what you get. You're not wondering like, oh, there's a secret sub menu that I never knew about. Imagine before YouTube, right? So when we're talking about evergreen principles, you can't base your decision of your design based off of certain contextual uh, experiences or realities or resources of 2018, which is why these Dieter Ram um, principles are so timeless, so evergreen, right? So you know what you're getting, you know where you can find it, you know you can click that help menu and it's gonna break down everything. It's honest, okay? Number seven, it's long lasting, okay? We know there's battery gate. We know that MacBooks can break. We know that iPads can break, iPhones can break. Yes, they can break, but they are built to last. And there are exceptions, and I've had problems with my own MacBooks. Right now I have a 2012 MacBook that its Wi-Fi antenna is just messed up, and it's built up into the display, and it would cost me thousands of dollars to open that up, fix it, repair, and it's just not worth it. But I've also have a 2006 Mac, 2009 Mac, 2012 Mac, 2016 Mac. I have an iPhone 4S, 5S, 6S, 7S Plus. Actually, the 6S is also a plus. I have uh, four generations of iPhone.